Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we are going to study basic data analysis. And whenever, whenever we have a bunch of data, a bunch of numbers like these, for example, quiz scores, we want to do data analysis. We want to analyze this data. There's three basic things we need to keep in mind, three basic things we want to find out. One of them is the basic distribution. That basically means the basic shape, if you have a bar graph, the basic shape of the graph. Or you might have some other kind of graph. For example, we're going to use a box plot, box and whisker plot here later. What's the basic distribution, basic idea where the data lies, okay? And then the other important metric here is the central tendency of the data. That means where is the midpoint of the data, if any. You could have a distribution where you would have like a, imagine a bar graph where there would be gra bars here, then a gap in the middle and bars here, okay? That kind of a data does not have central tendency. Or it has two peaks, I should say. But typically, most of the time, there is like a peak in the middle, so we need to find about that. And we can use three different numbers, mean, median, and mode, to measure the central tendency of the data. And then, variability within the data. Does it vary a lot? Is it spread out a lot? Or is it compacted together, close to the peak, so to speak? And again, there are several numbers we can calculate and use. Range, interquartile range, and then mean absolute deviation, and there are even more. Okay, let's look at these two examples now. Quiz scores, I have here 20 numbers that are representing quiz scores of a class of students. We want to analyze this data, okay? These plain numbers don't tell us much, right? It's just a bunch of numbers. So we want to draw a histogram, for example. We want to find the mean, find the central tendency, and then find the variability. Has it spread out a lot or is it compacted? Now, to make a histogram, remember histogram is like a bar graph, but the bars are drawn together because there is not a single bar for each number. For example, I would not draw here a bar for 11, and then for 12, and 13, 14, 15, etc. Instead, I group the data into bins. And to, find, to, to do this, you, ch you first check the minimum and maximum of this data, 11 and 30. The difference between those is about 20. And let's say I want to make five bins here, so I take 20 divided by 5 equals 4. That would give me the bin width, or how wide the bin will be, from 11 to 15. Okay, so my first bin is from 11 onward, the next one four points further, from 15 onward, so 11 to 14, and then 15 to 18, and then here I have 19, 23, and 27. So this goes up to 22, this goes up to 26, and this up to 30. These are my bins. Now I count how many of these items are between 11 and 14. So there's one, two. That's how high my bar will be here. 15 to 18, there's one, three. 19 to 22, there's going to be lots here now. One, okay. 23 to 26. Five, then twenty seven to thirty, four. Okay, and now on to drawing the histogram. I will first put here the beans, and then I draw the bars. First bar is two up, two high, like that. Next one would be three high, and then six high. My labels are not now exactly under the bars, I'm sorry about that, but to make it quicker, I just drew it by hand. And we can see that there is a central tendency, there is a, like a peak here in the middle, 
And to speed us up here in the video, I already calculated the mean. It is 21.75, which is in this particular bin, 19 to 22 bin, somewhere here. So that's the peak of the data. That's the central tendency. And also called the average. The average in this quiz, 21.75 points or about 22 points. Now this here, mean absolute deviation, you might not remember what it means. It is a measure of the variability within the data, measure of how much it has spread out. To calculate the mean absolute deviation, we first calculate how much each one of these items differs from the mean. For example, this one differs from the mean 0.25, right? 0.25 points. This one differs from the mean 3.25 points. And 18 is 3.75 points below the mean. And these numbers, whether it is below, whether these are below or above the mean, you always take the positive difference to the mean and get these numbers, this list of numbers. And then you take the mean of these, or the average of these numbers. So I calculated it and I got 4.05. It basically means that on average, these data items here are about four points from the mean. Okay? And we need to compare the mean absolute deviation, which is, which is about four, to the mean, which is about 22. The mean absolute deviation is not very small nor very big compared to the mean, because four compared to 22, four is not a very small number compared to 22. You know, one would be, or less than one would be very small. And it's not a very big number compared to 22. So this means the data is not very close to the mean. It's not very compacted around the mean, nor is it hugely spread out, but it's somewhat spread out. We can also see that in the graph. The data is not very clustered around the mean, and even the range, which was 19, it was 30 minus 11 equals 19. The range helps us see that the data is spread out. The worst score was only 11 points, while some students got 30 points on the quiz. If you had another class and you were comparing these quiz scores to these other classes' quiz scores, or the same class and later another quiz, and then you could maybe, maybe in the next quiz the mean absolute deviation was 2 or 2.4, much less than here, then it would mean that the data is more compacted together here. It has not spread out as much. And if the mean absolute deviation was more, maybe it was 5 point something in another quiz, then you would know that the data was spread out even more. Okay?